In this quick tip, we're going to learn how to turn a repeating group into a masonry grid display. With a simple checkbox, you can create Pinterest-style boards and galleries. Let's take a closer look. Here we have a repeating group on our page. When I preview, it shows a typical layout with a list of pictures. Each cell has an image element, one for each picture in my database. In order to see the option to use the masonry grid, we need to first make sure that we have two settings unchecked. Fixed number of rows and stretch rows to fill vertical space. Both of these options would prompt a different kind of layout than what a masonry grid could use. So only once they're unchecked do we see this option, display items as a masonry grid. Once we check that box, we can set a row gap and column gap to control the space in between each cell. Let's say 10 pixels to start. Next, we'll want to make sure our images aren't all fixed at the same proportions as each other. Otherwise, we won't see the proper masonry grid layout show up. To fix this, we can set the run mode rendering on our image element from zoom to rescale. That way, each image will resize differently to fit its element, depending on the image's original proportions. Next, we can also make sure that the image doesn't have a fixed height. That way, some images will stretch taller than others, giving us the overlap we want from a masonry grid layout. Now let's set the number of columns our masonry grid will be. There's two approaches we could take. We could simply set a fixed number of columns, let's say three, and in run mode, our masonry grid is ready to go. Alternatively, if you want your grid to shrink responsibly, instead of having a fixed number of columns, we could just set a min width to our columns. I'll try 250 pixels here so that each column is at least as wide as each image element. Just take note, with no fixed number of columns, scroll direction is now an option. To keep masonry grid available, we'll need to make sure this remains set to vertical. And now the number of columns in our grid will be dictated by however wide the repeating group can be. Currently, our repeating group can stretch to fit the whole page. So if we preview that, here's what our masonry grid looks like. And should we define a max width to whatever group contains our repeating group, we can see how the grid adapts. In this case, the repeating group has no parent group apart from the page. So we could also just set a max width on the repeating group itself. Whether we do 800 pixels or 550 pixels, the grid will still be responsive, but the number of columns will be limited to filling in that max width. Keep playing around with your own repeating group settings, as well as the settings of any parent groups that may contain it. That's it for this quick tip. For more, be sure to check out Bubble Academy.